The dating industry is one of those fascinating things where every time you look at it, the perception of it changes all of the time. One moment, it's the best thing in the world for men. The next, it should be something that everyone should be avoiding. But at the heart of it are essentially the people running and maintaining it. The people who change lives for better or for worse. I am, of course, talking about the dating and pickup coaches. My name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit subscribe and stay up to date on all the juicy gossip from the dating industry. And of course, advice that's going to help you with dating women and to overcome your social anxiety. As someone who's worked in the dating industry for the last 16 years, I can honestly say I've seen and heard it all. And having been a dating coach once upon a time, I can speak from experience and say there are plenty of highs and lows within the dating industry. Which got me thinking, if there are guys who are thinking about doing day game or pickup, what things should they be aware of? And I figured the best way for us to explore this would be to discuss what I've seen a lot of coaches go through over the years and how I've been with them every step of the way. In case you didn't know, I've worked behind the scenes with pretty much every dating and pickup coach you can think of that's ever passed through London. I think hilariously at this point in time, you could ask any single one of them about me and that they'll very likely say either they've worked with me or that they know of me. I filmed all of the infields, produced, directed and edited all of their video content for their YouTube channels. But I've also been a consultant and a creator and helping them to design their products, their services and help them with sales. And with some coaches, I've worked with their clients and taken them out for cold approach coaching or specifically offered counseling or therapy where necessary. Point being is that I've spent an intimate amount of time with the pickup coaches for you to understand that what I share with you is the truth. Now, out of respect for the 80 plus coaches that I have worked with, I will be keeping them completely anonymous. And I would kindly request that you guys try not to make guesses or assumptions in the comments below. I'm not looking to stir things with coaches or cause speculation. I simply just want to bring you guys awareness to the problems and make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into, especially if you choose to navigate the world of day game and pickup. The stories I share in this video are to give you a deeper understanding of what happens to coaches over the years in the world of pickup. There are an insane amount of perks to cold approaching, but there are also a lot of downsides if you obsess over it, just like in some of the stories that I do plan to share. So without further ado, let's go through them. When putting this video together, I was thinking, what's the best way to express what the last 16 years has been like? And I think the best way to do this is by splitting us into three parts, the good, the bad, and the super ugly. I added the super just to give you that extra incentive just to stick throughout the video. And let's face it, the super ugly is going to be the one of most interest to a lot of men. Why you ask? Stick around to find out and don't forget to like the video. So starting off with the good. First of all, working with the dating coaches has been an absolute pleasure over the years. It's been a phenomenal experience to just work by their side and shape how they work with clients and see them and their results over the years improve too. Most coaches I would say over the years are very independent and responsible and sometimes it amazes me just how above and beyond that they go for not just their clients but also their friends as well. I consider myself to be very fortunate to be friends with so many dating coaches. Although hilariously, it can be difficult at times for us to not talk about anything else but dating. They have a vast amount of knowledge of how dating and attraction works. And it makes sense considering they literally live and breathe it. And I've definitely seen an evolution of care and support for guys over the years too. I've seen some coaches truly go above and beyond for their clients and helping them get as far as getting a girlfriend and walking them through it literally every step of the way. And I think some of the more beautiful stories that I've heard over the years 
have been where guys have met their lifelong partners through cold approaching and that the particular coach who was there at that special moment was invited to their wedding to help them celebrate. Plus I'm sure the odd bridesmaid had the odd happy ending too. But joking aside, I think every coach that I have met over the years has in some form brought some goodness to the dating industry. They have made some life-changing experiences for both their male and female clients and are very dependable and offer support wherever they can, making life working with them an absolute breeze. Right, that's the good stuff done. Now on to the, uh, the more juicier stuff, the bad. One of the unique traits that a lot of dating coaches develop is the near removal of their anxiety. They speak to so many strangers as part of their job that they are no longer phased by it. They push past a social line that so many men wish that they could be reaching, but they tend to go further, much further. In fact, they can go so far they don't know or remember where the line is and then there is a blur on their reality and they struggle to remember what is socially and unsocially unacceptable. I bring this to your attention because there have been a lot of coaches over the years who essentially act like grown up children. In fact, a better description of the relationship that I have had with many coaches over the years is like spending time with a teenager in heat and having to play the parent role to try and keep them in order. Some have gotten themselves into so much trouble at times that I've genuinely and hilariously had to tell them off. They'd sleep in, be late for clients, be lazy and irresponsible, and if anything, try and find ways to get out of working with a client completely. Calling in sick or trying to pass the work onto another coach for little or no pay. Now, you would have thought that most grown-ups would have outgrown this phase from school, and especially those that are trying to run a professional coaching business to help men. But nope, it wasn't really something that bothered me, but the ignorance and selfishness that some of the coaches had were just unfortunate byproducts of working in the pickup industry for too long. Those particular coaches learned to only care about themselves and say what they needed to, to keep everyone else sweet and happy, especially to keep their rock style lifestyle going. I've unfortunately also worked with some terribly bad dating and pickup coaches over the years, ones that should never have been coaches at all. See, the industry attracts an alluring lifestyle to men. Some of those men deserve a great life, but others, they are solely in it for the hustle. I've also known a couple of coaches to scam money out of some very vulnerable guys. They say to them that they can help them, but they know deep down that they can't. Or worse yet, I even remember a coach who used to take money and then just genuinely not help guys at all. He would disappear for a number of months at a time before coming back and trying a new angle of marketing and to lure the next vulnerable guy to hand over his hard-earned life savings or cash. Now fortunately he has been out of the industry for a long while or has he? No I'm just kidding he has been out of the industry for a long while maybe. The last one the super ugly is one that you will probably find the most shocking and also depressing. It's what happens to those coaches who the addiction of doing pickup just simply gets the better of them and has led to mental health and serious well-being issues. These next stories I share are never revealed in the industry for one simple reason. They don't bring business. If guys knew of the problems that dating coaches have faced and dealt with behind the scenes, I'm sure it would be so off-putting for any guy to approach working with a coach, let alone consider doing pickup in the long run. Like most people who get addicted to adult content, they look for more extreme ways to appease their lust for dating. I've known many coaches who needed that extra hire when dating women, that they would be constantly reliant on alcohol and drugs to keep their spirits high. The over desensitization of cold approaching had completely left them feeling hollow. They needed to constantly take something to feel something. And as much as I'd like to say that it wasn't frequent, it was. I remember a couple of coaches who literally had to take drugs night and day just to help them to appear normal. 
Other coaches that I've known have also had mental breakdowns due to traumas, and some I've had to counsel through their most hardest of times. A few had lost their friends and family who had exiled them due to their addictions, whilst I knew of a couple of others whose loneliness clearly got the better of them. I remember another couple of coaches who got their dates pregnant simply because they hadn't been wearing a condom, which for me is a big no-no if you're thinking of sleeping around, and had pretended that they didn't want to be a part of that child's life. And when the girls had either had an abortion or miscarried, it's sad to say, but it had genuinely had broken some of them. Now, surprisingly over the last 16 years, I think roughly half of the dating coaches that I've worked with have cried to me in some form or another. I've had to offer counseling, therapy, support, or even dating advice simply because of the predicaments that they found themselves in and having no one else that they could turn to. I think one of the scariest situations that I had with a pickup coach was one who tried to overdose because of depression and I had to rush him as quickly as I could to hospital. I think it was a very, very scary moment, um, particularly for the both of us. But I've also had others that I just haven't been able to support them in time or even knew that they needed it. I know of a few who had self-harmed or sadly worse, they'd taken their lives. One of which most of the people in the industry have heard of. As I wrap this video, I want you to have this key takeaway that dating coaches are human too. There are good ones and bad ones out there in the world. Some are openly transparent about their lives and others are not. Unfortunately, I can't really choose who you should work with. That is something for you to decide on your own. But whoever you do choose to work with on your journey, be as wise as you can be with choosing them and be as sensible as you can be when it comes to practicing day game or pickup. The industry in general only promotes a positive outlook in dating, but just bear in mind that too much of something isn't good for you. And hand on heart, I want you to have the best experiences possible. These days, any coaches or clients that I work with, I am very strict on how they behave in the industry, all for the simple reason of preventing them from going over the edge. And if you can stay humble to the experience of pickup and learning to talk to women and don't let it consume your life, then I can assure you, you will have an amazing experience that will change your life forever. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you found my content interesting and I'd be keen to hear your thoughts on this video too.